Crash Bandicoot is back and he's sporting a few more polygons now. This remaster isn't just a boost in render distance with some anti-aliasing. This is a complete rework made from the ground up and matches the original games perfectly. If you enjoy judging depth of field on a 2D screen and a talking mask straight out of a Chuck Russell film, then this game is right up your alley. We know Crash isn't the easiest game for casual players, so we here at Tips and Tricks have five tips to help you take down that wretched cortex. Tip number one, 3D side scroller. Crash may have some side scrolling and over the top bits, but you have to keep in mind that all three games are still played in three dimensions. This can be a blessing as well as a curse. Crash games have a movement mechanic that takes heavy influence from 2D style platformers. However, you're still able to move Crash in any direction. This makes Crash significantly harder, especially when judging depth of field. Utilized correctly, this third dimension can be used for good. By jumping toward or away from the camera, you're able to round an obstacle or avoid an enemy's path entirely. It may feel like cheating, but it's obvious the developers intended this to be a legitimate strategy as they've hit quite a few things in these areas. Tip number two, damage jump. One mechanic players need to familiarize themselves with is the jump that occurs when the Bandicoot siblings take damage. Crash and Coco can't handle being hit at all, but when their friend Aku Aku is around, they will be able to take a hit or two. However, when this hit occurs, Crash or Coco will do an automatic jump, and if the player is not careful, it can lead to a quick death. It is very easy to accidentally jump off the edge of a platform after an unexpected hit. Ensuring you have this unexpected jump under control can be your best bet at keeping your extra lives stocked. Tip number three, perks of sliding. An extremely helpful feature that was introduced in Crash 2 and kept for Crash 3 is the slide ability. There are three perks to sliding that make it tremendously useful. First, it is an attack and can be used as such to take out many types of enemies. Second, sliding can allow you to jump higher than Crash or Coco's normal jump height. By sliding, then holding jump while in the animation, you will perform a split jump, which will give you increased height to reach higher up items and boxes. This jump also allows you to cover more distance and can help you skip obstacles. Third, if followed up by a spin, then you can move at an optimal speed through the level, achieving the best time and securing those relics. Side note, spin sliding is the fastest way to maneuver, at least until you obtain the running shoes. Tip number four, how to 100%. Now, Crash games have never been lacking in their level replayability. These games can be difficult to 100%, but can be so fulfilling doing so. The first two items are easy to obtain. The crystal is almost always along your main path and can be obtained easily in a normal run of the level. While the white gem can be obtained by destroying every box in the level, this includes TNT and Nitro. TNT just needs a quick hop, while Nitro needs an enemy launched into it or you'll need to find the green exclamation point box in the level to explode them all. Now this is where things get tricky. You can also obtain a colored gem in most levels. Most levels will give you a hint on the load screen to help point you in the correct direction. As for relics, don't worry about those till you've got the running shoes. Life becomes a lot easier once you do. Tip number five, patience. We're gonna call this one the wombat tip cause it's short and sweet. Patience is a legit virtue and can be extremely hard to keep when you're running through a level after your 10th game over. But crash games don't always care for your quick speed. Much of the time you're waiting for the correct cycles to match up to make it through an obstacle, and rushing through it will just lead to more deaths overall. If you need to, go take a breather, then try to conquer it again. You'll get there with time. It is amazing seeing Crash in HD glory with smooth animations and vibrant worlds. Toys for Bob did an amazing job recreating the games that put so many kids through rage counseling. The sound design is so iconic, the boss battles are still so fun, and all of our favorite exploits as a child are still able to be executed. The developers kept this so accurate to the first games that it is only making us even more excited for the recreation of Spyro later this year. In the meantime, let's crash and bash into boxes and try to take on Cortex's wrath all while teaming up with friends and racing for relics. Side note, we here at Tips and Tricks would love to challenge the developers to recreate a certain racing game, eh? I mean, hey, you already have all the character models. <laughs>